think it's on to me that you ain't coming back. I've lost my chance to see. Hi guys, welcome back to the channel today. My name is Osiris May and if you're here for the first time, thank you so much for stopping by, hit on the subscribe button and also please turn on the notification bell so you're notified when I post a new video. In today's video, I want to share with you guys how to make this beautiful dress right here. But before we go into that, I want to quickly talk to you guys about the sponsors of today's video. This video is proudly sponsored by Handy Sim. This is a website that is made to help you manage your tailoring business effectively from the palm of your hands. It enables you to have better staff access and communication to make workflow easier. It helps you with measurement information and also enables you to upload styles, images and others with details such as the client's name, pricing and many more. To register on this website, go to handysim.com or you can check out my description box the link is there as well the registration process is very straightforward so once you're done with the registration you have access to all the tools you need to effectively organize your fashion business so go ahead and register with the link in my description box you're going to thank me later because this website is just the best for tailors so guys to make this dress i'm going to be making use of this fabric here it's a scuba fabric but you can actually use any fabric of your choice to actually recreate this dress what i have here is scuba because i want it to look exactly like what i have on the thumbnail and scuba has a way it stretches very much on one side so that's why i opted for scuba another material you'll be needing to make this dress is a zipper for the back and you will also be needing elastic for the sleeves so now let's go ahead and fold the fabric make sure that you're using the stretchy part for your horizontal measurement okay fold the stretchy part if you are using scuba actually make sure that the stretchy part is where you are folding for your horizontal measurement so as you can see i'm making a first fold so go ahead and fold your fabric into two ones like this and then fold it again to actually make it into four places so you want to make sure that you have some extra space here from this point here to serve as your zipper allowance for the back so now you want to take a measurement from this point down to the end of the fold that you have and you have to make sure that it's enough for your bust measurement divided by four because this fabric right now is folded into four if it's not enough adjust your fold and do it again until it's enough for that measurement now to get my half length which is a measurement from my shoulder down to my waist what i'm doing is because this top is going to be an off shoulder dress right this dress is going to be off shoulder i left the tape by five and a half inches from the top and i'm marking right now my half length which is the measurement from my shoulder down to my waist so after marking that i just went ahead to cut it out so now i know exactly what i'm working with for my half length so now still extending my tape by that five and a half inches i'm coming down to 10 inches i'm marking 10 inches here which is my bust point and from this 10 inches point i am coming up by two inches this is just going to serve as our chest line so now from the middle fold not from the zipper allowance i'm going to take the measurement i want this neck to be how wide i want it to be so i'm marking five inches like this i marked five inches from that point and i just made a kind of round neckline it's not very deep now from this other point i will just connect a slant to meet the chest line so this slant i just connected is going to just serve as our armhole okay because this is off shoulder so i'm just going to pin this down so that it's not shifting from where i want it to be now i have my neckline and my armhole now on this bust line here I'm going to divide my bust measurement into four and make a mark there. This was why I told you guys to make sure that the fabric you fold is enough for your bust measurement. Now, coming down to this waistline, because this fabric stretches, I'm not going to be adding a dart. So I just went ahead to divide my waist measurement by four and marked it here and just connect it to meet the bust point. Can you see what I have here? So I'll just go ahead and cut what I have here, but I'll be leaving about half an inch away from the side. I won't be cutting this side exactly so i'll just use this half an inch for stitching allowance 
So now let's go ahead and cut out the skirt part. Now for the skirt part, it's actually very easy. You are going to fold your fabric into four again, but you make sure that it's wide enough to get your hip measurement because that's the biggest part of this measurement here, okay? So now to get the length that you want the skirt to be, you're going to minus your half length from the full length that you want your dress to be because we've already cut out the half length now the length i have here for the skirt is 41 so i have 41 left after i'd remove the 16 inches that was my half length i don't know if you guys understand now from the middle of this folded piece i went in by my waist measurement divided by four i marked it there and from that point i came down by eight inches this eight inches i came down by is my hip line now from the middle again on this line i marked my hip measurement divided by four so now i'm just going to use my curve to connect this waist and hip points to give me my hip curve so just go ahead and do the same thing divide your waist measurement by four mark it at the top and divide your hip measurement by four mark it on the hip line and from this hip line here i'm just going to go down straight with a straight line because it's a very long skirt you can actually decide to slant it a little bit but for this one i just decided to go down straight and as you can see i just went ahead to cut it out about half an inch away from the line that i had so now you can see the top part and then the skirt part together okay so these are the pieces we are going to be using to make this dress now let's go ahead and work on the top part first i'm going to be needing to cut out the lining for the neckline so i went ahead to cut out this piece you can see i cut it out using the neckline for the front and also i did the same thing for the back it's very simple to cut out just trace the neckline and use it to cut out another tiny piece so i'll head over to the sewing machine now and stitch this lining piece this is to turn the neckline i'll just place it stitch it like this and like this i'll do it for the front and for the back as well so guys after i was done turning the neckline this is what i had so i can decide to fold this in if you're using a different kind of fabric but i don't want this part to be looking thick at this end i would have folded it here but i opted to leave it like this because it's not even going to fray so by the time i'm done with this dress i'm going to hem the facing to the dress actually with my hand needle and thread so i've also gone ahead to use the facing to turn the back pieces as well you've already seen that so now i'm going to go ahead and join the skirt part and the top of this dress together so this is the waistline for the skirt you can see it looks very obvious now i'm going to place the skirt part of the waist part of the top actually itself and i'm going to go ahead and stitch it together you can actually decide to pin it down i decided to do it here so that you guys will see what i'm going to do so i'll head over to the sewing machine and stitch it here this is for the front piece so now for the back pieces as well it's still the same process just pick the right parts together like this and i'll just go ahead and stitch it together to become a one piece i will do this and i'll be right back so my loves after i was done stitching it down you can see it now looks like a very long dress it's gradually coming out nicely and this is what the back piece looks like actually this is one part of the back and this right here is the other part you can see i'm just arranging them right sides facing each other what i want to go ahead and do is from here down to somewhere here where i'm making a mark we're going to have a zipper now from this mark i'm just making a line all the way to somewhere in the middle of this skirt where our slit is going to start from so the slit is going to start from somewhere here all the way to the end and these white lines here is where i'm going to stitch down to cover and then at the top here i will stitch my zipper so the slits will be down here so i'll go ahead and stitch this area here and fix my zipper and i'll be right back so guys i've stitched the zipper to this top area here as you can see i tried as much as possible to be very careful with it especially for fabrics that are stretchy so that the zipper doesn't fold too much so like i said i was going to do i stitched it down to an extent and then left some space for my slit 
at the back so you can see that one part of the slit is actually staying very nicely here so this is what i did let me use this other side to show you guys so you're going to cut some part of your hemming gum and you're going to place it inside the fold for your slit at the back like this go ahead and iron it out and it's going to actually end up looking like this other side okay so now this is all for all of this part let's go ahead and work on the sleeves so now for the sleeve this is something i do a lot on the channel so i've already gone ahead to cut out this piece now the width of my piece is about 36 inches now this depends on how full you want your gathers to be for your sleeve so for mine i have 36 inches and then for the length from here down to this end i have almost 14 inches but the actual length i want the sleeve to be is 11 inches so by the time i fold it up here and also on the other end i'm going to end up with that measurement okay so now as you can see i folded one part of the top this is actually the top of my sleeve because i'm trying to get the armhole so i just folded it in like this because this is the best way this is like the easiest way to cut out a sleeve for an off shoulder and i just arranged the sleeve area of my dress you saw how i did it I went ahead to just cut out the armhole now by folding it in once like this it actually helps you so that you don't have issues when you're trying to fold the top after you have cut it out okay so once you're through with this i'm going to go ahead and make folds of both ends both up and down of the both sleeves so this is what i mean i've made this fold up and down now i'm going to cut out elastic that i'm going to pass through both the top and the end so the one that is going to be at the top i use half of my shoulder measurement which is seven inches and for the one that is going to be under i used the measurement around my arm which is nine inches so for the top go ahead and divide your shoulder measurement into two to cut out the elastic for the sleeve so as you can see i'm just going ahead to pass the different elastic through the casing that i have for them i'm going to do this for the both sleeves and i'm going to show you guys what it looks like so guys this is what it looked like after i was done passing the elastic through the casing so i'm going to head over to the sewing machine and just secure all these elastic ends so that it doesn't pull through and then once i'm through with that i'm going to stitch each sleeve to the dress okay so i will go ahead and do it for the both parts that's the left and right i will just place it and stitch it like this and do the same thing for the other side so after i was done stitching the sleeves to both front and back pieces this is what it looks like you can see how nicely it's coming out so now i'm going to arrange the sides together because we're going to head over and stitch down half of the side so i'm just aligning the both pieces together like this i'll be using one inch to stitch this down despite the fact that i gave it half an inch stitching allowance because this fabric is very stretchy so you can actually afford to do that so i'll stitch it down and stop my stitch right here for now i'll be stopping right here and i'll do the same thing for the other side using one inch stitching allowance so guys this is what it looked like after i was done stitching it halfway with that one inch stitching allowance i didn't finish it up because of the ruffles that we are going to have from this part to the end so when we open it up we'll be able to stitch our ruffle pieces so let's go ahead and cut them out so guys this is the piece i'm going to be using for my ruffle I've already gone ahead to cut it out and I'm just going to be explaining to you what the length looks like. So for this width here, I have about 6 inches on this side and you can see I've already folded the ends round. And for the longer part, I have 2 yards and about 11 inches. Now whenever you want to make ruffles, you must make sure that the ruffle piece you are going to be using is like twice the measurement of where you are going to be placing it in. So the part we are going to be placing our ruffle here is on this skirt part. So what I have here is like twice the measurement I have there so that you have enough for your ruffle. So as you can see, I've stitched down one side of the ruffle at the ends like this you can see the part i stitched down so only one side is left unstitched so you can see how i'm placing my ruffle piece on the waistline like this go ahead and place yours like this on the waistline and from that point start pinning it down so i'm just going to continue to pin these ruffles like i'll make a, a little pleat and i'll pin it down and i'm going to continue with that process until i get to the end 
of this sketch part now this is not very easy it's it's actually quite time consuming and when you're doing this another thing is that you can actually do this while sewing on the sewing machine you can decide not to pin this down first but i'm pinning this down for the purpose of this tutorial so if you're a total beginner go ahead and pin it down first so that you'll be able to actually handle the whole process so i'm just going to continue with this until it gets to the end so guys once you have done it to the end like this you can decide to first of all make a stitch on top of it before covering it up with the other piece or you can leave it like this and remove the pins as you sew so now we're going to cover this up with the back i hope you guys understand what's going on here and i'm going to make a top stitch but be mindful of the pins i'm going to remove the pins as i sew so after i was done making that stitch for the both sides this is what it looks like and our dress is actually ready i went ahead to hem the ends as well and this is how cute it looks on me so thank you so much for watching this tutorial today i'll be seeing you guys in my next one bye